can you talk a bit about your study on the lifetime risk of cardiovascular disease based on cumulative exposure to lipoproteins and SBP? Yes, that, I mean, that's exactly what um, I was speaking about a moment ago, this need for next generation of algorithms. So one approach that some people have suggested that is not unreasonable is to use genetics. And one way to do that is to calculate a polygenic score where we simply count the number of risk increasing alleles that a person inherits and then identify those people early in life who have a high lifetime risk and focus prevention efforts on those people. Unfortunately, recent evidence has merged to suggest that that's probably a harmful strategy because relying on a polygenic score alone to identify those people at highest risk doesn't really identify people who benefit most. And so we end up over treating some people at high polygenic score but low LDL and blood pressures and missing those people who have high lifetime risk because of high LDL and blood pressure. Another way to um, incorporate the power of genetics and causal estimates of effect in particular using Mendelian randomization is to, is to develop lifetime risk equations that estimate the effect of the cumulative exposure to LDL and blood pressure on the lifetime risk of cardiovascular disease. And that's what we tried to do. We tried to do two things. First, we wanted to test the hypothesis that in fact, the effect of LDL and blood pressure does increase year on year and therefore has a cumulative effect on the risk of cardiovascular disease. And secondly, we wanted to test whether or not we could use these causal estimates of effect derived from genetic Mendelian randomization studies to more accurately estimate lifetime risk and benefit and thereby overcome some of the limitations of current risk estimating equations. And the way we did that is we looked at um, 450,000 people in the UK biobank and we estimated the effect of each millimole year of increasing um, exposure to LDL and each millimeter of mercury year of increasing exposure to systolic blood pressure and the risk of cardiovascular disease and found that in fact it does increase over time, thus confirming the cumulative exposure hypothesis of atherosclerosis. We then took those causal estimates of the cumulative effect of LDL and blood pressure measured in millimole years in millimeter of mercury years for the first time, along with pack years of smoking and decades of diabetes exposure and generated new lifetime risk estimating equations and compared them with existing equations. And what we found is that these new uh, lifetime risk estimating equations using causal estimates of the cumulative effect of LDL and blood pressure actually more accurately predict the, the risk of cardiovascular disease over any time horizon, either lifetime risk or 10 year risk as compared to current lifetime and 10 year risk estimating equations. And they also produce biologically more plausible estimates of effect. For example, one of the major limitations of the current 10 year risk estimating equations that really inform our guidelines at the moment um, they have the tendency to underestimate risk in young people with a really high risk factor burden. In addition, they tend to overestimate risk in older people who've had very low levels of LDL and blood pressure exposure the whole of their lifetime. And using causal estimates of effect tends to solve both of those problems. In addition, using causal estimates of effect uh, of the cumulative effect of LDL and blood pressure also allows us to to accurately estimate the, the benefit of lowering LDL and blood pressure over any time horizon using simple changes in the inputs we put for LDL and blood pressure, a person's LDL and blood pressure. And that really overcomes the limitation of, of combining non-causal estimates of risk from observational studies with the causal estimates of benefit from randomized trials. In fact, using causal estimates of the cumulative effect of LDL and blood pressure over time not only allows us to, est to precisely predict the results of randomized trials that last two or five years, but also to accurately predict the results of the long-term leg the legacy effects of lowering LDL or blood pressure observed in long-term follow-up of trials. And then finally, because using causal estimates of cumulative exposure is the only way to accurately estimate risk and benefit over any time horizon, it also is the only way to tell us the really unresolved question that we want to know. If we accept that after the LDL and blood pressure has a cumulative effect over time and that the 
the risk of atherosclerosis therefore depends on both the magnitude and the duration of exposure. The critical unresolved question that patients want to know and doctors want to tell patients is when should they begin to lower their LDL or blood pressure and by how much in order to achieve their individual target lifetime risks. And what we can do now by using lifetime risk equations that use causal estimates of the cumulative effect of LDL blood pressure over time is do precisely that. We can now tell somebody based on their individual target lifetime risk goal, we can and their cumulative exposure up to that of LDL blood pressure up to that point, we can now tell people exactly how much they have to lower their LDL for how long and beginning at what age in order to achieve that goal, which is really the essential information that people need. And so using this information, we can begin to reconfigure risk estimation toward um, uh, health management. Similar to the way we, invest, we, we recommend, we conceive of wealth management, where we recommend that somebody invest a certain amount of money each month in order to achieve whatever their goal is at retirement. We can now frame health uh, in the same way. We can say, we can tell people how much they have to invest in lowering their LDL or their blood pressure or both in order to achieve their target lifetime risks benefits. And we think that focusing on benefit rather than risk is a much stronger motivation to keep people engaged and want to invest in their health to achieve those benefits over time.